Hello everybody and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311 and today I'm putting out a video that I hope will help some people experience one of the best VR games out there and that game is As God's Wrath. So I'm gonna try and keep the tempo up in this video because I'm sure you just want the information and you wanna hurry up and get into game. So there will be links in the description for you guys to check out to jump to any specific bit of information you may need. Now this guide is intended for the Valve Index. Your mileage may vary on other headsets. Now obviously your first step is going to be to download the Oculus software and then purchase and install As God's Wrath. If you receive any notifications that you are missing hardware, just skip through them. Now I do recommend if you have the available space, you install this game on an SSD. It is an extremely large game, which equates to long load times. So if you can spare the space, I do recommend you use it. Now while you're waiting the 8 million hours for this game to download and install, go ahead and get yourself Revive. I have a full tutorial on that, but really it is as simple as just going to the download, which I will link in the description. I will also link my revive tutorial in case you get lost. And the current version as of making this video is 1.8.2, which does not have many specific as God's wrath it's updates. So there will be more updates coming in the future. So just keep an eye out for additional revive updates because the revive page does specifically mention that they are working on this game. Now, once you have revive and your game installed and you launch the game and you're able to get in, you may come across some performance issues. Now, if you happen to be using an Nvidia graphics card and you're not on the latest drivers, I highly recommend you get the latest drivers because there is a performance boost and a reduction in any form of stuttering if you are on the latest drivers. I have an extremely beefy machine. This is a 9900K CPU with a 2080 Ti GPU, and even I ran into some performance issues. Now, if you wanna be able to get some real-time information on what's going on in game, I do recommend you pick up FPS VR. It's a really cheap program. It will give you an in-VR overlay of your current GPU performance and your frames per second, and I use it all the time. Now, the first performance increasing recommendation comes directly from Senzaru, the game's developers, and they recommend setting your Steam VR super sampling to 100%, meaning no super sampling. Please note that Steam VR has two super sampling options. One is the global that gets applied to everything, and the second is application-based super sampling. Generally, how I like to have my system configured is so I do not frequently need to make changes. So I left my global Steam VR super sampling at 135, and I then lowered the application-based super sampling for Asgard's Wrath until the combined total equals 100%. This is where many people's nemesis math may come into play. Now, FPS VR will do this comparison for you and give you the total number, and you can actually modify it while in game, making life great. Or if you just happen to have a more reasonably priced PC, you might already be at a global super sampling of 100%. Now, when I originally started playing this game, my super sampling was at 130. The in-game settings were set to high, and I played for about 90 minutes thinking everything was fine. I would have no performance issues at all. I did, however, then begin to start experiencing some random stutters, specifically when I would swing my arms, which was extremely strange. Now, this guide is intended with smoothness at the forefront. I'm averaging about 110 frames per second, but I will get dips down to the 60 mark when I move into large open areas. Even with those dips, reprojection is doing a great job of making sure the game feels smooth and I'm not experiencing any stuttering or jarring after effects that break the immersion. I would like to be able to turn up the graphics a little bit, However, like I said, smoothness, not experiencing any stutters, is my absolute goal at the moment. I'm hoping updates to both the application and Revive will make some performance improvements and I could crank those graphics back up again. Remember, this game was intended for a much lower resolution headset at only 80 hertz. 
So now you're in game, you've experienced the game for roughly two hours, and you have an understanding of how the game is currently performing. Either you are eyeballing it, or you are using an FPS counter, and right now, you might want to consider additional changes. Based on your hardware, the game has already picked a preset. Even with a 2080 Ti, I'm actually running the game on medium, with the resolution scaler up by one bump in-game. Now, if your performance is not on par, you will start with that preset and lower it down by one setting. So if you're on high, go down the medium, medium, go down the low. And consider bringing the resolution bar to the absolute middle. I don't recommend going lower than that because things start to look terrible. Now, if you've lowered these settings and you're starting to feel like you have Vaseline on your eyes or you're experiencing some weird graphical anomalies like a blurring around your hand and weapons and some of the enemies there are advanced i and i edits you can make that i actually found on the revive forums which will help improve the clarity now this might seem complex but it's actually quite simple if you can use a text editor you can handle this i'm going to put everything you need again in the description so you are going to browse to percent local app data percent wrath game saved config windows no editor again everything in the description so don't worry if i'm going fast and you are going to proceed by editing two files one is scalability and the other file is engine now if you are paranoid don't worry we'll make a backup of these files so just go to engine file copy paste the backup, and let's name it engine backup. Let's then go ahead and open up the engine file. It's a regular text file. Now you're just gonna go ahead and add the text that I've included in the description to the bottom of this file. Now I added something optional here that's a my personal preference, which is the display gamma. That is completely optional. Personally, I feel like the black levels on the index aren't great, and when you are in dark areas, the game doesn't look that good. This is mandatory for games like Vader Immortal. This code works in every single Unreal Engine game. So I placed it in here too. If you find this makes the game too bright, you can just lower this number. But the display gamma is obviously brightness. That's the optional code I included. The code that's there to increase the image quality, this will make anti-alias changes and should help sharpen up the game. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up the scalability INI file. Now, really, there was no need for a backup because by default, this file is empty. So just go ahead and copy the text that's in the description into this file, save both files, and when you turn on the game, there will be noticeable changes. Now there is a change you can make in game user settings, which seems pretty dramatic. However, I've noticed that as God's Wrath tends to reset this setting now go ahead and open up the game user settings copy the one line into the bottom of this file and also save this file now these ini edit settings that i suggested is to counteract some of the artifacts you're seeing with revive and just a general blurriness they may however tend to degrade your performance so you might want to experiment with lowering the actual numbers in these ini files but if you are going to start tweaking i recommend you google the actual command Find out what exactly it's doing before you just go ahead and making random changes. Again, these modifications are for anti-aliasing, which is designed to remove jaggies and make objects look smooth, but that does come at a performance cost. You can now go ahead, launch the game, and see some noticeable improvements. Hopefully, by this point, you've now been able to find the perfect settings between performance and clarity. I find it a little bit ironic that with a 2080 Ti, I'm still leaning more towards butter smoothness than really eye-popping graphics. I have experienced the game on both ends. I've played a bit on Epic with super sampling turned up, and I've played with it on medium with resolution set to the middle and no super sampling. And I have to say, Wow, that visual clarity when the game is running smooth is amazing. This is a beautiful, beautiful game. I do not want my immersion broken and I don't wanna experience any stutters that impact my ability to play the game. So right now I'm just erring on that. Let's run smooth and then hope for revive and game updates and then I'll pump up the graphics. Okay everyone, I really hope this video helped you because I want everyone to experience basically the best of what VR has to offer. 
I've already dumped about 13 hours into this game. I'm only maybe 20% if I remember correctly, and there's going to be a lot more content for this game coming out. I will have a review in the near future. I just want to make sure I experience enough before I actually attempt to review this game. It is a huge game. And every time I think I know exactly what the game's going to hand me, the game takes an unexpected turn and I'm just even more excited. Obviously, I like the game, if you can't tell by my tone. If you liked the video, if you liked my content, please consider giving a thumbs up, leaving a comment, subscribing. I appreciate it. Maybe ding that bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I will see you guys on next time.